Welcome to IntelliPath's YouTube channel. In this video on cybersecurity, we will be learning about what is cybersecurity and what is hacking. Then post that, we will be learning few basic concepts of cybersecurity. Then later on, we will tell you why cybersecurity is so important to learn. So guys, this is the agenda. So before we move on with our live session, please subscribe to our channel. And also, if you want upcoming updates, please hit the bell icon and also leave a like if you enjoy our content. So now guys, let's see what exactly cybersecurity is. So basically, cybersecurity is the practice of protecting systems, networks and programs from digital attacks. These cyber attacks are usually aimed at accessing, changing or destroying sensitive in information. Implementing effective cybersecurity measures is particularly very challenging today. The reason behind this is, there are more devices than people and attackers are getting more and more innovative day by day. Now people have a misconception between cybersecurity and hacking. So cybersecurity is a defensive term whereas hacking is an offensive term. Hacking generally refers to an unauthorized intrusion or access into a computer or a network. It can be either organization network or a personal network. Hacking is identifying weakness in computer systems or networks to exploit its weaknesses to gain access. Now that we know what cybersecurity is and what hacking is, Let's see some basic concept of cybersecurity. Now cybersecurity basically consists of these three components that's integrity, confidentiality and availability. Together these three principles from the cornerstone of any organization's security infrastructure. In fact, they function as a goal and objectives for every security program. Now first let's see what is confidentiality. It refers to an organization's efforts to keep their data private or secret. In practice, it's about controlling access to data to prevent unauthorized disclosure. Typically, this involves ensuring that only those who are authorized have access to specific assets and that those who are unauthorized are actively prevented from obtaining access. As an example, only authorized payroll employees should have access to the employer payroll database. Furthermore, within a group of unauthorized users, there may be additional, more stringent limitations on precisely which information those authorized users are allowed to access. Next, let's see what integrity is. In everyday usage, integrity refers to the quality of something being whole or complete. Integrity is about ensuring that data has not been tampered with any and therefore can be trusted. It's correct, authentic and reliable. E-commerce customers, for example, expect product and pricing information to be accurate and that quality, pricing and availability and other information will not be altered after they place an order. As in the case with confidentiality, integrity can be compromised directly via an attack vector such as tempering of detecting systems, modifying configuration files, etc. Now let's see a third aspect, that's availability. Systems, applications and data are of little value to an organization and customers if they are not accessible when authorized users need them. Quite simply, availability means that network, system and applications are up and running. It ensures that authorized users have timely reliable access to resources when they are needed. Countermeasures to help ensure availability include redundancy, hardware fault tolerance, regular software patching and system upgrades, backups, comprehensive disaster recovery plans, etc. Now depending on an organization's security goals, the industry, the nature of the business and any applicable regulatory requirements, one of these three principles might take precedence over another. For example, confidentiality is vital within a certain government agencies, integrity takes priority in financial sector, and availability takes place in customer care services. Now let's see why cyber security is important to learn. The first reason we have is cyber security is very high in demand. For those having professional recognition of their skills, there are currently a very large number of vacancies which are available across the globe. The workforce is expected to rise by around 6.5 million to the end of next year. The next reason we have is it's very highly paid. There's nothing wrong to say that with the increasing challenges in the cyber security domain, the overall number of professionals needed have fallen short. Now, due to this reason, the experts in this field have seen significant growth in their salaries since recent years. The next reason we have is cyber security is future proof. After getting the required training, the professionals are free to work in any organizations and this is because almost all of them, whether small 
or large scale need security experts in this arena. Since the demand is more and supply is less, the salary of cyber security professionals is expected to grow at a rapid pace. And the fourth and final reason we have is, it increases your value as a cyber security professional. One of the best thing about cyber security is, there's a huge number of organizations where professionals are required. So when you have some certifications, and required skill set for cyber security, it increases your value as a professional and you get to work with well-known organizations such as Dell, Accenture, etc. So why cyber security is important for a company? The first reason we have is it protects your business. That's obvious. Cyber security protects your customer database, it protects your network, it protects your systems and everything. So that's how it protects your business. The second reason we have is it increases your productivity. So as everything is secured, it has an impact of your increased productivity in the business. And when you have increased productivity, you have increased customer confidence. So when customers data are not leaked and they trust on you, it increases their confidence and they keep on working with you. The next and the last reason we have is it stops your website from crashing. So hackers might try to get into your website and steal information, but when you protect it with cybersecurity, it never crashes. So now we have seen what exactly cybersecurity is, what hacking is. Let's see what are the steps of hacking. Now these are the steps that hackers use and even cyber security professionals use. We call them ethical hackers. The first step of hacking we have is footprinting. Now footprinting is the process of collecting as much as information possible about a target network. This is for identifying various ways to intrude into an organization's network or system. Now why do we need footprinting? Footprinting is necessary to systematically ensure that all pieces of information related to the technologies are identified. Without a sound method for performing this type of footprinting, you are likely to miss key pieces of information related to a specific tech or organization. Just a quick info guys. If you want to make a career in cyber security, then IntelliPath has a post-graduation certification in cyber security and ethical hacking by ENICT Academy, MNIT Jaipur. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by MNIT professors and industry experts. Now we mainly look for four points. The first one is no security posture. Footprinting allows attacker to know about the complete security posture of an organization. The second, it reduces attacker's attack area to specific range of IP address, network, domain name, report access, etc. It also allows attacker to build their own information database about target organization security weakness to take appropriate actions. And finally, it allows attacker to draw a map or outline the target organization's network infrastructure to know about how the actual environment that they are going to break. Now, we usually collect information about three groups, network, host, and people involved. We need network information like domain name, network blocks, IP address, TCP and UDP services, which service is running, etc. The second one we need is people. We need information like employee details, organization website, location details or personal addresses, etc. And finally, we need the host details or the computer or network details. It includes user or group names, routing tables, remote system name or system names, etc. Now there are mainly two types of footprinting that are involved. The first one is active and the second one is passive. Active means it directly interacting with the target to gather information about the target. For example, we use Nmap tool to scan the target. For passive, it's like trying to collect the information about the target without directly accessing the target. This involves collecting information from social media, public web websites, etc. Now let's assume that an attacker is about to hack a website's contact. He may do so by using a search engine like Malgato, researching the target say a website or a tool like HTTP track to download the entire website for later enumeration. The hacker is able to determine the information like staff names, positions, email addresses, etc. Now let's move on to our second step, that's scanning. Hackers are now probably seeking any information that can help them penetrate attack such as computer names, IP addresses and user accounts. Now that the hacker has some basic information, the hacker now moves to the next phase and begins to test the network for avenues of attacks. 
There are three types of scannings that are involved. First one is port scanning. This phase involves scanning the target for the information like open ports, live systems, various services running on the host. In vulnerability scanning, checking the target for weakness or vulnerabilities which can be exploited. It is usually done by with the help of automated tools. And the third one that's network mapping. Finding the topology of network, routers, firewall servers, if any, and host information and drawing a network diagram with the available information. This map may serve as a valuable piece of information throughout the hacking process. Now that we have done scanning, it's time to move on to our next phase, that's gaining access. Gaining access or enumeration is the phase where an attacker breaks into the system or network using various tools or methods. After entering into a system, he has to increase his privilege to administrator level so that he can install any application he needs to modify or hide data. Enumeration is often considered as a critical phase in penetration testing as the outcome of enumeration can be used directly to exploit the system. For example, say a hacker chooses to attack using a phishing type. The hacker decides to play it safe and use a simple phishing attack to gain access. The hacker decides to hack into IT department. They see that there have been some recent hires and they are likely not to speed up the procedures yet. A phishing email will be sent to you using CTO's actual email address using a program and sent out to all the techs. The email contains a phishing website that will collect their login and passwords. Using any number of options, the hacker sends an email asking the users to log into a new Google portal with their credentials. They already have the social engineering toolkit running and they have sent an email with the server address to the users masking it with the bit.ly or tiny URL. Now that's how hacker gets into your system. Now after gaining access, the hacker has to maintain access. Hacker may just hack the system to show it was vulnerable or he can be so mischievous that he wants to maintain or persist the connection in the background without the knowledge of the user. This can be done using trojans or rootkits or other malicious files. The aim is to maintain the access of the target until he finishes the task he planned to accomplish in the target. In this case, the owned system is sometimes referred to as zombie systems. Now that the hacker has multiple email accounts, the hacker begins to test the account on the domain. The hacker from this point creates a new administrator account for themselves based on the naming structure and tries to blend in. As a precaution, the hacker begins to look for and identify accounts that have not been used for a very long time. The hacker assumes that these accounts are likely either forgotten or not used so that they change their password and elevate pri privileges to administrator such as secondary account in order to maintain access to the system. The hacker may also send out emails to other users with an exploited file such as PDF with a reverse shell in order to extend their possible access. Now these are some of the examples how hackers try to maintain access when they get into a system. There might be other ways as well. And finally when they maintain access, they have to clear their tracks. Prior to the attack, the attacker would change their MAC address and run the attacking machine through at least one VPN to help cover their identity. They will not deliver a direct attack or any scanning technique that would be deemed noisy. Other access is gained and privileges have been escalated. The hackers seek to cover their tracks. This includes clearing out sent emails, clearing server logs, temporary files, etc. The hacker will also look for indications of the email provider alerting the user or possible unauthorized logins you under their account. Now these are basic 5 steps of hacking that every ethical hacker, cyber security professional or black hat hackers use. Just a quick info guys. If you want to make a career in cyber security, then IntelliPath has a post-graduation certification in cyber security and ethical hacking by ENICT Academy, MNIT Jaipur. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by MNIT professors and industry experts. So guys, we have come to the end of our session. I hope you all enjoyed it. For any questions that you have related to coding, you can mention it in the comment sections below. So thank you so much for attending this session and meet you in another session.